Hello everybody, Christian from Treasure Town here, and today we're going to be going over the legend of the $223,700 1964 Special Mint Set. Now, there's a ton of different coins in really nice condition that might look like the ones in front of us from 1964, but very few of them are going to have the values uh, adding up to the multiple hundreds of thousands as was the case for this group of coins. Um, I'm going to be giving the context and a lot of the backstory, but you have to understand that 1964 was a really hectic year for the United States Mint. We were transitioning from a 90% silver composition on the half dollar, quarter, and dime over to a clad one, or in the case of the half dollar, a 40% silver planchet. Um, the previous year, um, 1964, we were backdating a ton of coins to that year, and as a result, there were tons of different errors and problems occurring at the mint. But what people did not focus on is that there were these 1964 coins that were being produced not in the traditional proof set, where there were specially prepared dies that have really, really nice reflective surface coins, um, but instead uh, more in the style of the specimen special mint set type coins. Um, and the coins, as you can see, here's our first one, um, don't look too, too dissimilar from a circulating strike. Um, it's not the case where proof coins, you can definitely tell if it's different, um, though these exhibit sort of satiny fields and a few other characteristics, which we'll get into later. Um, and there were not any official records of this having been struck. So the director of the Mint, Eva Adams, um, the coins are originally supposed to have gone to her, um, and then somehow made their way to some Stax Bowers sales, and uh, Lester Merkin, who was a major coin dealer at the time, seems to have purchased the coins from her estate, and that's maybe how they got into the public. But there's a lot of mystery around these, and the one in front of us is a $4,560 coin, but this one, in even nicer condition, sold for $15,600, and that's just the penny. So beyond that, uh, and first, I'll take a little moment here, there can be some very valuable coins that aren't the special mint set. If you have one in perfect condition uh, or near it, like this Mint State 67, you can get 7,900. And when I'm talking about the proof, here's the massively reflective fields of a proof coin. This one was in perfect condition as graded by PCGS and sold for a bit over $2,000. Now, in terms of the nickel, this sold for $2,300, not a staggering sum, but that's because it didn't have the full steps designation, along with being one of these rare special mint set coins. Now, in terms of something I haven't covered, which is the fact of how rare are they actually, well, there's an estimated 20 to 50 of these sets known to the public, um, though they didn't all necessarily come in set form, and the problem is the coins get resubmitted to the grading services with hopes of higher grades, so their populations are likely a bit inflated, but um, the PCGS populations um, for the nickel, for example, is only 18. NGC has a fewer amount, but this one sold for $32,900 because it has the full steps um, on the back of the coin, the reverse sort of above Monticello on those steps. Um, and then the dime here for reference, um, this is one of the less expensive coins. This one sold for $6,600, but a lot of these weren't even sold in sort of the main upswing of recent in the coin market. So it'd be fascinating to see what they could do. This one sold for $10,200. And then after that, we have the Washington Quarter. This one sold for $9,000, but it's just a reminder of the rarity of these coins when a regular Mint State 66 1964 quarter is probably going to be worth 25 or 40 or in that range um, dollars. So hardly enough to purchase a lunch or, you know, a, a nice dinner, whereas this one could make a major impact. Now, the last one is the Kennedy half dollar. The one in front of us sold for $47,000 and received additional offers of 70 and then $77,000 that were declined. While the one after it, which graded Specimen 68, sold for $156,000 in a Stax Bowers auction. Now, I think the other interesting thing to note is that a lot of these prices that we've been covering 
actually are not sort of the nicest coins that have been offered um, for these series. So for example, this uh, specimen 68, you know, there's notes of there being a 69 from NGC and possibly even from PCGS, though now it's not in the official pop report. Before that, though, I want to get into some of the die markers. So how to find these coins in addition to the satiny fields that are sort of on display on Washington, um, you know, and, and it's uh, also quite sharp rims along the outside. You can also look for these heavy die finishing or die polish lines here all through the reverse on the one dime. And there can be die polish in, in other coins, but sort of a combination of these factors. And they do have a close resemblance to those 1965 special mint set coins. You can see the same thing here with the Jefferson nickel, as well as along the fields um, above the date in 1964 on the penny. Um, the half dollar is by far the most valuable one. I think it brings up a good point often um, sort of the higher denomination and certainly larger planchet size is what people really look for. There, you know, I get people who say, oh, I've got a crosslet four. It must be the special mint set. Not necessarily, um, but that is an important feature that is present on almost all of these SMS coins. Also heavy dive finishing or dive polish lines uh, along with super sharp rims is sort of the diagnostics for this SMS. Now the thing is, since there's not very many official records, it's plausible that some of these did get spent, though I think it's really challenging. I mean, if you have a good eye and can sort of discern what special mint set or proof or you know what coins uh, should look like and are able to be on the lookout, you know, you could have a potential to find one of these, but I would say it's extremely, extremely unlikely possibly even less likely than a 1969S double die penny variety. Now, the $223,700 special mint set is not necessarily the maximum value that these coins could achieve. So not only are not all of the auction prices recent in a strong coin market, but a lot of the highest auction prices weren't achieved with the nicest condition coins. Those simply haven't come to auction recently. For example, in the penny, uh, it sold for 15.6. Well, that was with a specimen 67, while there is a 68 that exists. Same thing, there's two grade bumps for the dime and quarter, um, both sort of in the $10,000 region, but there are uh, coins two grades higher that are available while on the half dollar side. You know, at one point in a heritage auctions sort of description, they said that there was one at PCGS, but I looked in the pop report and couldn't see it. There certainly is one graded 69 at NGC, so it's not even clear that this $156,000 coin is even the nicest known. So with the market today, I could see the ultimate record achieved for these coins, whether you want to call them special mint set or just the Adams 1964 coins, you know, maybe could even achieve three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000. Really, it sort of depends on which big bidders come into the picture and try to purchase some of these ultra rare, somewhat modern coins that I think stand out as some of the least documented and most interesting coins at a time where there was a lot changing in the monetary structure and certainly the silver content, you know, that's a basic way of putting it, but really broader implications for what the currency was being backed up by at the time. Thanks for watching this video. I always enjoy discovering some of the really interesting facts and history behind the neat coins that we've produced from things that are common to things that are varieties and errors to things that are legendary rarities such as the ones that were discussed in this presentation. Hope that you enjoyed and if you have any ideas for other content, please let me know. I'll be excited to try to produce it and I'll see you on some of my other videos. Thanks for watching the video. I'd encourage you to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel to stay updated. I've also got Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, so you can follow me there. Um, TreasureTownYT.com is the main channel website. Definitely give that a visit. I've got a lot of information about me up there and the channel. Uh, CoinGrabBag.com as well currently redirects there, but it's some good opportunities for very fair grab bags, both made by me and other sellers. A lot of different options, so that's a good way to support. 
Um, there's also treasuretowncoins.com. In the future, my coin dealing uh, operation will be done out of that website. Uh, coinmeltprice.com for updates on the melt prices of your coins, both U.S. and world. A lot of resources in that website. And then coinsmetalscards.com being developed right now as a marketplace and news source for coins, metals, cards, and collectibles in general. So I'll see you on my future videos. Looking forward to seeing you there and hope you have a good day.